It is uh, November the 16th, 2012, and I want to show you something that may or may not surprise you. Uh, I'm using the old Collins S line stuff here. I've had it for decades, but that's not what it's about. What it's about is an antenna tuner. Here's a homebrew antenna tuner made, works great. Very pleased with it. Make nice contact with it. But I want to show you something. What I'm using here is a bird watt meter. This is the uh, the bird line section with a 250 watt element. This is a digital readout that I've uh, had sometimes. I really like it. You don't have to uh, have parallax or strain it looking at a meter. But anyway, watch this. There's my forward power. There's my reflected power. I can tune that one watt out. That's not a problem. I can get over here and twiddle with this and tune it out. There's, uh, there's what the uh, tuner looks like. Now I want to show you something. Here's the amazing thing. Is I just measured the uh, power output according to Mr. Bird here. And this is from the uh, transmitter to the input side of the tuner. And I get it, I'll show you once more. So this is forward power right here. Right there, make sure it's making good contact. There's my 104 watts. There's my one watt reflected. It drops a little bit after it warms up, 93. I got some old tubes in there. 94, 95, whatever. The point is I got about 100 watts. It's gonna come back up even, 99. Maybe it'll make 100, maybe it won't. But anyway, there's our forward power, there's our reflected power. There it is. Okay, now I'm gonna to have to stop the camera and do some rewiring and I'll show you something. Okay, now I've done a little bit of rewiring. I've jumpered this one together, which used to be going through the watt meter. This is between, this puts it right here. This is what we just looked at. And this is the power between the output of the transmitter and the input of the tuner. Now we're looking at uh, the power between the output of the tuner and the antenna. This is, uh, this one goes straight to the antenna. Watch this. And there's our forward power. And then our, there's our reflected power. So our 100 watts that we see by measuring the, um, the power between uh, the transmitter and the uh, tuner is up there at the 100 watts. And our transmitter is really happy. It sees 50 ohms. Here's, here's a device I built many years ago. It's a uh, measures resistance and reactance. And indeed, it will, it's, it's a beautiful little instrument. And if you put this uh, on the input to the tuner, it will measure 50 ohms with X of zero. You can get it that you can get it that great with the tuner. No reactants at all. No minus J, no plus J, no inductive reactants, no capacitive reactants. You can, you can tune all the reactants out and get it to 50 ohms. It works great. But that's what we have. It's been on now for a while. It drops a little bit. Again, I think my tubes are a little weak, but now we got 49 watts forward. I just bumped it there. And uh, five watts reflected. So there you go. So is the uh, almighty antenna tuner worth it? Uh, makes the transmitter happy. It thinks everything is just uh, perfect. But uh, what does it really do for us? I, uh, I still question it. Been a, I've been on the air for uh, 49 years now. I have rarely ever have used an antenna tuner. They do seem to help. They actually do. I, I can't... I'm not really trying to chunk rocks at them and, and make them uh, a really bad idea, 
I don't think they're a bad idea. Like I say, they definitely make the transmitter happy, but uh, uh, who, who are we fooling here when we think that uh, matching our transmitter up to the antenna perfectly is uh, the perfect thing to do?